Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup with People's Dispatch where we bring you some of the top stories from across the globe. Let's take a look at today's headlines. US jury indicts police officers and medics for the murder of Elijah McClain. US Supreme Court rejects appeal to block abortion law imposed in Texas. Mexico reveals plane carrying Evo Morales was attacked during 2019 coup. Aid agencies warn Afghan healthcare system at risk of collapse. Prominent trade union leader arrested in South Korea. A grand jury in the US has indicted five people for the murder of 23-year-old Elijah McLean. Three police officers and two paramedics are facing 32 charges. These include manslaughter and negligent homicide. McLean was walking home when he was stopped by Aurora police in August 2019. The officers were responding to a 911 call about a suspicious person. McLean was placed in a now banned chokehold and could be seen stating repeatedly that he could not breathe. Paramedics who arrived at the scene then injected McLean with 500 milligrams of ketamine. As he was placed in the ambulance, he was found to have no pulse. As per reports, McLean had a cardiac arrest on the way to the hospital and died on August 30th. His murder was followed by sustained protests calling for justice. These protests spread during the 2020 mass uprising after the police killing of George Floyd Several instances of racist and violent misconduct by Aurora police have been reported in recent years. A grand jury in the state of Colorado concluded on Wednesday that police had used excessive force. Moreover, there was no evidence of McLean doing anything illegal. Continuing with the US, the Supreme Court has rejected an appeal to block the abortion law imposed in Texas. The law bans abortions if cardiac activity can be detected in the embryo. This usually occurs around the six-week mark when many people may not even know that they are pregnant. According to abortion providers, 85% of people seeking the procedure are at least six weeks pregnant. The law also does not make any exceptions for cases of rape or incest. An abortion is only allowed if the pregnancy poses a threat to life. However, the scope is narrow. What is important to note is that the law bans state officials from enforcing it this makes it difficult to challenge the law in federal court. Instead, private citizens are authorized to sue anyone who either performs or aids or abets an abortion. An emergency appeal was filed against the measure in the Supreme Court on September 1st. However, the conservative majority court voted 5-4 to four to deny the request. A federal appeals court had also rejected a prompt review of the law before it came into effect on Wednesday. This is the most restrictive law imposed in the U.S. since the legalization of abortion under Roe v. Wade. Mexico has revealed that a plane carrying former Bolivian President Evo Morales was attacked in 2019. The Mexican Air Force said that a projectile was launched as they took off from the Chimor Airport. After the coup, Morales was forced to flee the country amid serious threats to his life. He stated that the coup leaders had placed a price of $50,000 on his head. He was granted political asylum by Mexico. Information about the rocket attack was shared in a new book by President Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador. It contains a document from the National Defense Secretariat. It notes that after Morales and two other officials had boarded the plane, the clearance was revoked. The plane was forced to move just as more soldiers arrived in the area. An RPG rocket launcher was also targeting the plane. The pilot Miguel Hernandez got out to try and speak to the National Defense Secretary. However, he was beaten and the soldiers demanded that Morales leave the plane. A Bolivian generally finally granted clearance saying that, the, saying that the plane had 30 minutes to leave the airspace. After they finally took off, Hernandez noticed a light trail characteristic of a rocket. He was able to turn the plane and increase the rate of climb to avoid impact. At least 60 Afghan women and girls held a protest in the city of Herat on September 2nd. They demanded that the Taliban include women in the new government. There has been a power vacuum in Kabul since the Taliban took control two weeks ago. An official has now stated that the group will soon announce a new government. Meanwhile, major sources of foreign aid and funding have now been suspended. Food prices have reportedly increased by 50% and fuel by around 75%. Long queues have also been reported at banks with limits imposed on withdrawals. Aid agencies have warned that Afghanistan's healthcare system as, is at risk of collapse. MSF, that is Doctors Without Borders, has also stated that many people who delayed getting medical help 
due to the fighting are now coming to hospitals. Here is a video feature on the state of healthcare in Afghanistan. medical and health system in Afghanistan was not according to people's choices in and we have seen many Afghans coming to Pakistan because of lack of health facilities in Afghanistan and that has been the case for the last two decades maybe over two decades but particularly last two decades some of the acute diseases were not uh, addressed inside Afghanistan and we believe that uh, most of the hospitals built in Afghanistan lack special um, doctors, uh, specialties uh, to deal with the special diseases. And that's why they were mainly traveling to Pakistan, to Peshawar and also to Lahore. And we have also seen people traveling to Karachi via Chaman border. For instance, in Pakistan, there are a lot of cancer uh, patients coming from uh, uh, Afghanistan and uh, special cancer hospitals, mainly two in Lahore. One is in uh, private sector, which is owned by present uh, uh, Prime Minister of Pakistan uh, on his mother's name uh, is called uh, Shokat Khanam Memorial Hospital and another hospital, Anmol. They both were treating Afghan uh, 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 over the years and also now the, these facilities are being built in Peshawar and we know that uh, Imran Khan, the Prime Minister, had been saying that we need hospital in Peshawar because many Afghanis has to travel to Lahore. So that expresses that there was lack of health facilities for ordinary people in Afghanistan. I think U.S. priority was building mainly the military bases, the military means and uh, the war weapons and they had spent uh, all that amount mostly on weaponization of Afghanistan, weaponization uh, of uh, Islam also. They were the one who started weaponizing Islam in the 80s when uh, there was a change in Afghanistan. So we have not seen any considerable sort of health system in Afghanistan in public sector. And uh, we have also seen that hospitals were bombed sometime by both sides, uh, sometime by accidentally, but sometime when there was a severe fight to occupy a district, particularly in southern part of Afghanistan, hospitals were the, um, were the main uh, targets uh, and uh, we see people leaving those hospitals and i see that there was no human development including the health facilities in afghanistan promoted by american uh, while they were there and ashraf ghani government was also mainly dealing in recruiting the army personnel and then training and so on so you see now um, abandonment of all these weapons in Afghanistan, but we don't see any um, fine hospital uh, that uh, 
the um, um, Ashraf Ghani could have presented or Taliban would have used at present time. So Taliban has to build a new health system and I don't know if they have a priority of health system because their priority is just religion. They want um, practically implementation of religious traditions but health is not their priority either. So people of Afghanistan would continue to suffer even in the near future because we don't see that uh, in the present circumstances where Afghan government is not been uh, recognized by any government till now and it will take some more time and uh, I, I don't think that Afghans would be able to, uh, uh, to continue to build some uh, necessary health system. And for a final story, we go to South Korea where a trade union leader was arrested on September 2nd. Yang Kyung Su is the head of the Korean Confederation of Trade Unions. He and 22 other members have been accused of violating the country's COVID-19 guidelines. The KCT organized mass rallies in Seoul between May and July. 8,000 workers participated in a demonstration on July 3rd to demand a revision of the Labour Act. They demanded the abolition of non-regular employment and an end to job cuts. Workers also asked for measures to prevent industrial accidents. Moreover, the hourly minimum wage grew by only 1.5% in 2021. Workers across sectors have been mobilizing for better working conditions. The Health and Medical Workers Union called off a strike on September 2nd after reaching a last-minute deal with the government. The agreement includes the establishment of at least four public infectious diseases hospitals. The state will expand funding to subsidize those treating, treating infectious diseases. It has also agreed to set up a recommended nurse to patient ratio. A deal has also been reached between the HMM shipping company and the land and sea based workers unions. After 77 days of negotiations, the company has offered a 7.9% increase in wages. Workers will also be given a bonus equal to 650% of the monthly pay. There will also be a 2.7% increase in welfare benefits. And that is all we have for this episode of the International Daily Roundup. For more such stories and videos, visit our website peoplesdispatch.org, subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you for watching. Thank you.